Yes. Hey, everybody, I'm Chris Cuomo. So today, Trump became the first U.S. president ever to stand trial in a criminal court of law. Jury selection began in Trump's campaign finance violation case. Not a single juror was chosen. Why? Well, only about a third were left from the first call of about 100. I think it was like 96 people after the judge and uh, the screeners asked questions about impartiality and strong how you had feelings about Trump. Only like a third of them were left. This is a bad look for my city, although it is better than people lying that they could be fair. Now, I'm surprised it was this extreme. Geraldo is not. And he's here to discuss whether Trump is really on trial or is it the system. Plus, Geraldo Rivera's got his pick for who won the weekend. And let's just say News Nation had the last laugh. And California Representative Ro Khanna, okay, This Democrat is one to watch. He wants to be part of the future of his party, and he likely will be. So let's ask him how he would handle these pro-Palestinian protests that broke out across the country today. Were people really supporting Iran sending hundreds of bombs into Israel? We have a truth bomb for people who think they're doing the right thing, supporting what they deem to be Muslim freedom fighters. One of the most articulate and penetrating thinkers on the issue is the woman on your screen, Elika Laban, a young Iranian expat, okay, an attorney who sees something eerily familiar here that is reminiscent of what happened in Iran. She will tell you why she worries that fundamentalism is taking root in America. She put out a post this weekend about it. She has gotten millions and millions of views and a lot of hate. Plus, we've got two big exclusives in the case of the missing Kansas mothers, Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly. They're not missing anymore. They were murdered and allegedly buried. Now, four have been arrested, including the grandmother of the kids that Butler was going to see. We have new court documents that shows where the bad blood may be coming from. And finally, someone is talking, and they chose News Nation to get it straight. A friend of Veronica's tells us her first thought when she heard her friend was missing. How did she know what had happened? And what does she want you to know? Also, I want you to have your say. It's your show, 844-968-7720. So, Let's get to this big historic day, the first day of jury selection in Trump's unprecedented criminal hush money trial. Here's what the former president had to say about it. This is a persecution like never before. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. And again, it's a case that should have never been brought. It's an assault on America. Now, look, in my opinion, the former president would have been well served by just owning what he did. The idea that he did nothing wrong is not true. The idea that he has nothing to answer for is not true. Now, does he have felonies to answer for that warrant a criminal trial during an election? That's the question for News Nation correspondent at large, Geraldo Rivera. Uh, it is very good to have you, big man. So um, the it's you not too, as bad buddy. as all 100 potential jurors saying they couldn't do it. Uh, but they didn't pick any today, and it will be hard to pick a jury. The idea that Trump is calling it a persecution and that this case should have never been brought. Your feeling? I feel that the former president is exactly right, Chris. This case never should have been brought. Uh, It was all this evidence was available to the federal prosecutors in the Southern District of New York. They opted not to pursue the case. Uh, Alvin Bragg tried three or four or five different theories before he finally settled. This is the first criminal prosecution, as you report, uh, in the 248 year history of uh, our constitutional democracy. This is the first time a president has been a defendant in a criminal case. It should be something unequivocal. It should be something understandable, robbery, murder, something. But this is a bizarre 
uh, creation of the district attorney, Alvin Bragg, who, like Letitia James, the attorney general, are machine uh, Democrats uh, who run what the clubhouse says they run. And I, I really do think that President Trump, he is, a, you know, a, a hot mess in many ways. I will never support him uh, again after he screwed the Constitution uh, and, uh, and, you know, after uh, uh, January 6th and so forth. But January he 6th. is being victimized. He is being railroaded. Uh, this is a case. Uh, uh, what is So here case? are the counters. Is it a hush money case? Is it an election interference counters. case? What is it? Here are the counters. One, no one is above the law. Two, he did it. Three, the guy who helped him do it uh, recorded a conversation that Trump suggested never happened, so he lied. And he is the one who says it went down exactly the way prosecutors say it does. 34 felonies, Chris. You alluded to this in your open. 34 felonies. You know what they are? So he paid 130000 to Stormy Daniels, the porn star. He, uh, where did they get the 34 counts? 12 ledger entries, 11 invoices, 11 checks. This is 34, it's not 34 counts, it's 34 overt acts to commit one crime. It's not 34 crimes, it's one crime. So it's being ridiculously overcharged. It's, it's clear, it's clear. And, and they say that he, he uh, covered it up because uh, election interference, that's what the district attorney alleges, election interference. What if he was covering it up because he didn't want his wife to hear about it and kick him out of Trump Tower? You know, you, you have to prove that he did this in furtherance of election interference. And I maintain that this is not, not provable with clear and convincing evidence beyond a reasonable doubt. This is a stretch. That's why they debated whether or not to bring this case. They, they, uh, Bragg was under tremendous pressure from the Harlem Democrat machine. And, uh, you know, you have to do as well as Letitia James in getting uh, the penalties and the th- hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, this is really, really a, a tremendous stretch. It does a disservice to the, uh, to the justice system. This isn't justice. It is persecution. They campaigned. Alvin Bragg and Letitia James, the attorney general, campaigned that they were going to get Trump. And that was their campaign before they were elected. That was their that was their their platform getting Trump. It's just not fair. It's just not fair. And I I think that, uh, you know, the system should be ashamed. Look at this diversion. Uh, You you, can't pick the juries, uh, you know, uh, because they're everybody hates Trump in Manhattan. Uh, Back to you, Chris. So, no, no, look, I I get it. You're making uh, the right points that are being discussed all over the country uh, right now. I, looking at the statutes involved, believe that this is a misdemeanor case. Um, Now, they're going to say the money involved and they're going to put in some other aggravating felony factors to make it felony. But it's one misdemeanor. Um, Look, that's their case to make. Yes, I, I think it is one act that they are breaking into little slices of each part of the transaction. Um, which prosecutors do, but doing it here only adds to the dubious nature of it. I think what will be really interesting is I was given a suggestion today that if the defense does put on a case, which, of course, the defense doesn't have to do for you guys at home because of the presumption of innocence, and it's on the prosecution to make the case, not the defense to defend, that part of their argument is going to be he didn't need to hide this from people in the election because they already thought that he was a cheating, sneaky dirtbag. So he had already had the access, Hollywood tape and everything else that was going to come up. He didn't need to make people think that he's a good guy or a good husband because they already had plenty to believe that he isn't. That will be a very interesting defense. But I also find it oddly compelling that well, why would he be covering it up? It's not like people thought that he was like husband of the year to begin with. Well, you know, it's, it was a month before his first election. He had no idea really how he was polling, despite all the, uh, you know, the, the, the polls being taken. He was a wild card uh, a month before the biggest day of his life. Uh, you know, I can see how the guy gets nervous. Hush, paying hush money is not a crime. What's the crime paying hush money? Here, right. uh, Stormy Daniels, this is $130,000 for the sex we had uh, uh, 10 not years before in 2006. You know, it's not a crime. Uh, so 
I, I really think that Alvin Bragg may be very talented. Uh, a million dollars he gets from George Soros, it's okay. I, I let him slide on that. Uh, that's Alvin Bragg, Letitia James, same school of thought. I, I think it, they're making him a martyr. Uh, maybe the people that support him live outside of yeah. Manhattan. Uh, but uh, you, they lost 50 jurors today. I want to know who can be fair to Donald Trump. You live in Manhattan where you got 12 percent of the vote. I, I think the odds are very long that Donald Trump will get anything like a fair trial. If it was a fair trial, it would have been dismissed already. Look, I think they'll be able to get a fair trial, and I don't think it's a great case. So um, we'll, we'll see what happens with it. The problem for me with it is, and I want to bring in Ro Khanna to have this discussion, is that the worst part about these cases is that it throws shade on the other cases that are actually very formidable. Ro Khanna, Congress member from California, part of the leadership now and future of the Democratic Party. It's good to see you joining me and Geraldo. Thank you very much. Great to be on, Chris. Great to see my friend uh, Geraldo as well. Um, let me just set the table, and then Geraldo can, I'm of all, course, jump in. I'm all in so, for Roe in uh, 2028. I, I swear. <laughs> well, good. At least you're not biased. So it's, so it's two on one here, just how I like it. <laughs> Ro, let Never me ask you this. Here is the, here's the criticism. Here's the criticism. Um, this is a bad look for the Democrats. Bragg counts as a Democrat. James counted as a Democrat in the other case, but that one's done. Now we're dealing with Bragg's case. Uh, it looks like this is a stretch at best to go after a guy that you guys are afraid you can't beat at the polls. How do you see it? I think we've got to make the case at the polls. I mean, I don't think we should be making the case legally. And I agree with you, Chris, that this is probably the weakest of the other uh, cases. But people care about the cost of food. They care about the cost of rent. They care about the cost of gas. They care about the fact that this country offshored manufacturing for decades and hollowed out rural and factory towns. And what are we doing on that? And I think we can beat Donald Trump saying we're going to do better on the economy, on putting, uh, bringing manufacturing back, and helping working class families. This is a total distraction uh, to the core issues we need to focus on. Now, you didn't mention what Geraldo and I have discussed on this show is now at the top of the list for both parties, the southern border. It is seen as economic, national security, and also about the fabric of the country and what we're about. Uh, it seems that the president has been stubbornly insistent on doing nothing about the problem at the southern border. Is that the issue that could beat you? Chris, we need to have two thoughts. One, which your father actually had. When he tells the story, imagining what it was like for his parents to come to Ellis Island. And he says, he, he imagines that the uh, Ellis Island officer asked what would be your grandmother. What was her education? And she said, eighth grade. What does your husband do? He says he's a ditch digger. He said, why are you coming to America for economic security? What do you hope for your son? Nothing much, just that he would become governor of New York. It sent chills in this country because people understand we're an immigrant nation and no one is making the case for what immigrants have contributed to America, the aspirational case of why we're exceptional. First, we need to start with that. Then we need to say, of course we have a secure border. Of course there has to be a process for how you come in, like my parents came in. But let's not forget what immigrants have done for America and offer that aspiration. It's not that they've poisoned the bloodstream of America. Geraldo. Well, I, I totally agree with the congressman. I think that uh, his, uh, his message that the Democrats need an aspirational message when it comes to immigration is sorely needed. Uh, he's right to bring up your pop. Where are, where are those thinkers of the shining city on the hill? The, uh, the come on, uh, you know, let's embrace it and, the, and go forward. Let's take strength from each other. Uh, well, with Democrats have stood for this forever. Uh, it was your grandparents also. You know, uh, Congressman Ro Khanna is absolutely right. Uh, that we have to harness the energy uh, and, and not make people frightened. We've got to tighten up the border. It's, you can't have people just willy-nilly walking across with no idea of who it is and so forth. But there's plenty of room uh, within a, a, a reasonably prudent, uh, normal approach to, uh, to incorporate this energy. We're the, we're the country that everybody wants to live in. Now, you can't have it in disorder. You can't have 
people we don't know who are coming, but there is still plenty of room for an aspirational message when it comes to uh, Ellis Island, the Statue of Liberty, and what we want America's future to look like, Chris. Pop, uh, first of all, my grandmother made a, maybe had eight days of education, let alone eighth grade. Uh, but the point is taken, that they came here and they didn't offer anything except uh, their ambition uh, and their passion to do better. And, and that is something that is signature America. But you know what Pop would have offered up, which is what you guys should be thinking about, Roe, which is they came through Ellis Island. That was the processing center. Um, you should have a dozen of those along the southern border. You guys need infrastructure to process. I'm fine with the dream. It's the reality, though, Ro, that they are pouring through right now, overwhelming the CBP. Catch and release is like the worst policy in America right now. And it is on Biden's watch and in his lap. Why isn't he doing anything, even if he gets hung up in the courts, Congressman? Even if he does, at least he'd show that he's trying. Look, I agree with you that there has to be an orderly process. There has to be a secure border. Uh, my parents came here as immigrants, and my father came to study at the University of Michigan. He got a student visa, then he got a green card, then he, they became citizens. That is the process why, by which America has people come in, and we can't take everyone. I'm glad that there's a line of people who want to come here instead of going to China or Europe with its stagnant economy. It's because we're the greatest country in the world, but there has to be a process. Now, the challenge has been that Congress has enacted. You want to create those processing centers? You want to have more border patrol agents, which I do? You want to have uh, more people actually process before they get to the border? Uh, then let's do that. But we've got to have Congress to pass a bill to do that, to, to fund the uh, infrastructure that you're talking about. Biden I think could shut it down by solution. emergency order. Well, look, but the emergency order, then there, there's no process. I mean, then where is the process and where is the people who are legitimate, not the, the, those who are coming no, stop, without stop uh, the hemorrhaging. aspiration? I, stop the hemorrhaging. Well, I think what we need and then is let the process it. catch up. Then you turn around to Congress and say, I stopped the flow. It's closed right now. Now give me what I need. Give the CBP what they need so we can get the processing in place. But you got to stop the flow first. I think the president has put border patrol agents, he has put what he believes in his, in his authority to do. I think he believes that Congress needs to act so that he's not violating people's right. I mean, there are people, you would acknowledge, who genuinely are tortured, who genuinely are facing gang violence, who are coming with legitimate yeah. claims, and those claims should be recognized. Uh, and to, to stop all of them, I mean, look at Ukraine. We, we obviously want people coming, in my view, who are fleeing persecution in Ukraine. We want people from Afghanistan who helped our troops and now are being persecuted by Taliban to come to the United States. There are legitimate cases of refugees and asylum who should come here, and what we should stop is people who are coming here without any process. And 300 members of Congress agree on this. The problem isn't the solution. The problem is people on both sides are playing politics with it. Mm. Let me ask you one quick thing, and I'll get a thought from Geraldo. Uh, these protests that are going on around the country, where people think that the righteous position is to um, support Iran and the proxy regimes attacking Israel, what would be your message to those people across the country, many of whom identify with your party? Well, first of all, they're clearly wrong. I unequivocally condemn what they're saying, and they don't understand what they're saying. I mean, they're chanting death to America, and America is putting their protests up on television. What other country would do that? That's because we're the greatest country, because we actually respect their free speech. You think they could do that in Iran? We know what happened in Iran. Iran was killing any of the dissenters, killing the women who were uh, uh, not uh, engaged in the, uh, in the code that the regime wanted. So uh, I just think it is wrong rhetoric. Now, do I defend sort of the right of First Amendment speech? Sure, but not all speech that is First Amendment speech is uh, responsible speech. And I just think that it's a misunderstanding of the Iranian regime and a misunderstanding of the greatness of this country that's allowing them to do what they're doing. Hmm. Geraldo? I think that a couple of things. In, in terms of Representative Ro Khanna, I believe that he is the future. He, he is the bridge between the industrial 
uh, country and the digital country. And I really uh, think that uh, his future is, is unlimited. In terms of uh, Iran, Gaza, the protesters, and so forth, I, I would rather focus for a minute on the coalition that came together, that was brought together, and a, 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 a Herculean job of coordination that managed to get, in I Israel's defense, uh, the forces from the United Kingdom, obviously the United States Navy, the Jordanian military, the Saudis on board, United Arab Emirates. It is a new Middle East, could be a really new Middle East if we get Gaza uh, solved in a way that frees the hostages and, uh, and, and lowers the temperature. And as long as uh, Israel holds it back from, uh, you know, using uh, a huge weapons uh, against the population of, or against Hamas, hiding behind the population of Gaza. I think that we should look with great optimism at what a new Middle East could be. What a formidable force. Can you imagine Iran shoots a missile, a ballistic missile, and it flies over Jordan. Jordan is there and ready in the air and uh, their anti-missiles. Uh, the the uh, British fleet is there. The American Navy is there. Uh, those Iranian missiles and, and uh, drones and so forth didn't have a chance against the Iron Dome and the coordination of the world's democracies against the totalitarian force that only wants uh, a violence and, uh, and, uh, and suppression and dominance. So uh, I am very, very pleased. I don't know who was the architect of that. Maybe uh, Congressman Wood uh, tell us, but uh, I enjoyed watching all of the uh, Iranian uh, missiles blow up um, miles away from their targets because of the coordinated defense of a new force that is very formidable and could be the template for the future, Chris. Yeah, it's just not sustainable. Geraldo, I, I, and I, you don't kill a snake by grabbing, by grabbing it by one of the coils. You got to chop off its head. And the head of the snake is Iran, and something's going to happen. Uh, Ro Khanna, last word to you, please, Congressman. Well, I appreciate Geraldo actually having us celebrate something about America. I mean, there's so much doom uh, in this country. And I understand people aren't thrilled maybe uh, about the presidential election, but this was a moment where we should celebrate the American military for shooting down those missiles, where we should celebrate what Israel did, where we should celebrate the fact that we supplied them with Iron Dome and with Arrow 3 uh, that worked. And I'll tell you one thing of hope that I have. Despite as divided as we are today, we have a Congress today where there are descendants of Holocaust survivors serving with people who have family in Gaza. And that is incredible. And that's mm -hmm. why I believe, as Geraldo pointed out, that this country is going to be a, so a country capable of bringing peace there. Two states, a secure Israel as a right to a Jewish democratic state, side by side with the Palestinian state. I think we're going to get there after this war. Uh, to the audience, you, you may not have uh, been as familiar with Congressman Ro Khanna. Here's my experience. I don't know him the way Geraldo does. There aren't a lot of people on either side of the aisle that are willing to come on television and make the case these days. I'm just telling you, Ro Khanna has always been that way in my experience. And you always have an open invitation here to make the case to the American people about what's happening in the halls of Congress. Congressman Khanna, thank you very much for being with us. Appreciate you, Chris. Oh, Appreciate you, Geraldo. Thank you. All right. Geraldo Rivera, one of one. Thank you very much. I'll see you again soon. Four minutes and five <laughs> yeah, seconds. Thank you. Now, let's get a different perspective on what's happening here and what Iran really represents and what Iranians really want. Social media influence, Iranian, attorney, Elika Laban, millions of views, pointing out that what's happening in this country is downright dangerous and way too familiar to what took down Iran. What does that mean? She'll tell you better. Next. The good news is Speaker Johnson just announced that aid to Israel and Ukraine will get a vote and soon. The bad news is we have people cheering for Iran in America's streets. A TikTok post from Iranian-American lawyer, social media influencer, Elika Laban, went viral. Millions of views 
for calling out these protesters whom out of ignorance or arrogance are asking for precisely the wrong thing in her opinion. Elika joins us now. Thank you very much for being with us again, counsel. Thank you for having me. So to the young people who are saying Iran has the right to fight against the oppressor of Israel, what is your concern? I mean, my concern is what my concern was about six months ago when I came onto your show for the first time, you know, and we kind of had this discussion about how um, the 1979 uh, revolution or coup or whatever you want to describe it as in Iran began exactly this way, which was this um, kind of progressive radicalization um, that led to this revolution that brought in this regime, Ayatollah Khomeini's regime. At that time, people were not really receptive to mes- the message that we had at that time. It was fresh. It was after October 7th. Um, but essentially, the long and short of it is that you are coming out here and you're expressing vocal support for the Islamic Republic's proxies. You are expressing vocal support for Hamas and its attacks on Israel. And that was soon followed by, you know, vocal support for the Houthis and their attacks in the Red Sea, followed by vocal support for Hezbollah and their attacks into northern Israel. And so now we're we're three of three at this point. We're three of three with the support, the vocal support for these proxies. And you're telling me that there's no support for the parent company, the head of the snake? Well, of course, that was going to be the natural tra- trajectory because it's an ideological inconsistency to support the proxies and the instability and terror that they're inflicting in the region and not be in support of the head of the snake. And so, of course, um, this was the kind of watershed moment, the turning point where we realized exactly what it was that we as Iranians had been anxious about for the past six months after we had spent all that time seeking to educate the world about, um, you know, the experience of Iranians under the iron boot of this oppressive regime and how we need to um, stand with the people of Iran, the women in Iran, which quickly escalated to actually what we're going to do is, you know, distort this narrative entirely and express our support for the Islamic Republic in this um, retaliation against Israel, also failing to understand that this is not where the story began and this is not where the story ends. This was not an unprovoked attack. You know, this was a meeting of senior IRGC leaders um, with Hezbollah, in a IRGC military break base in Syria. And then you have to ask these questions. What are they doing there? Why are they there? What do you think that they're doing there? They've been attacking Israel since October 7th, before October 7th, way back to the 90s, uh, 90s striking um, uh, Israeli embassies and Jewish centers um, in Argentina, actually killing many civilians, many civilians. This is not a new feud. It's a decades long feud. So then when we see this TikTok generation of people that are coming out, twerking on TikTok about how the access of resistance is going to free water Melonia. OK, so now we've reached the point that you've just completely lost it. You've completely lost it. You're supporting a terrorist regime that the Iranian people have been trying to free themselves from for the past 45 years. You had no interest in saying woman life freedom after the death of a young Kurdish girl, Gina Amini, Massa Gina Amini. You've had no interest in se- celebrating our liberation movement. And now what you want to do is live vicariously through um, this, this, this attack against Israel, which did nothing but seriously injure a seven-year-old Bedouin girl. And this is the, the, liberate, the liberation that you're fantasizing about? I told the audience it was going to be a truth bomb. And that is exactly what comes out of you every time you discuss these issues. I direct people to your social media. Elika has been making an eloquent case uh, for months and months. I'm going to leave it there. You can go find out what she's been talking about. And as this situation progresses, Elika will be part of the mix of helping us understand what people like her from her country and in her generation are so worried about. Thank you for coming on tonight. I know this isn't easy for you. There's a big price for you telling can I, the can truth. Can I drop a quick, can I just drop one quick, 
one one quick thing before we leave. Um, there's still uh, Iranian uh, American hostages in Iran. Jamshid Sharmad, he's been on death row for three years. Uh, the U.S. has just given been given an ultimatum to pay 2.7 billion, or his life is done for. On May 11th, the U.S. State Department has had no response. We need all eyes on these hostages as well as the hostages in Gaza. Um, please follow his daughter in this campaign at Free Jamshid Sharmad. If you can put that link in the description, um, we, we need all eyes on, on our American nationals that are still being held hostage on death row in Iran and will be lynched if we, if we don't put attention on that. Thank you. We have covered it. We'll make sure it's on all the social media that goes out. Um, and of course, his daughter's doing everything that she can, and we will stay in step, in lockstep, with the efforts that we know are going on on the ground of Iran to get to a better place and against the regime that is being celebrated on America's streets right now. Ella Kalaban, thank you very much. Thank you for the advocacy. Thank you so much. Uh, and for the very specific thought to be continued. All right, we're going to take a break. Thank you. Elika Laban, L-E-B-O-N, that's how you find her. And the social media will put out, uh, we've covered this Iranian uh, who is being held. And his daughter came to you multiple times to say, what about him? What about him? We can't forget. Up next, um, these missing moms in Kansas, the worst has been realized. They're not missing. They're dead. They were murdered. Their bodies were found. The children's grandmother and three others were arrested. Premeditated murder. We have two big exclusives. A document that shows how's a grandmother wind up being a bad guy. We'll show you a document that is a hint. And a friend of of the mother is finally speaking out. Nobody has talked. Finally. Here's the first. Mother in Oklahoma. Over the weekend, two bodies were recovered, thought to be those of the missing moms. Four people were arrested, okay, including that grandmother, her boyfriend, and another couple, all on first-degree murder and kidnapping, all reportedly involved in some anti-government Christian group called God's Misfits. Not a single friend or family member has spoken out about this story, which has been really bizarre. Until now, joining us exclusively is a friend of Veronica Butler, who is the mother of the children at the center of it all. Buffy Schooley joins us now. Buffy, I'm very sorry uh, for what happened to your friend. And thank you for coming on to talk to us about her. Thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's because of Laura that I came to know you guys. I met her when she was here in town. Laura Engel, great reporter. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, Thank you yes. uh, for making that connection. And she's, uh, she's, the right one. she's the right one to trust. So you have said that when you heard that <clears throat> your friend wasn't heard from, that she was missing, you immediately had a thought that it might have something to do with the custody. Why? <clears throat> well, she had been going through a terrible battle for quite some time. I, I didn't know all the all the other parts about her getting harassed and threatened. Um, we didn't talk about that much in our conversations. Um, but I know that, that she was fighting for her, her children. What did she share with you about the nature of the difficulty? <clears throat> she just said that she had, she was trying to change the venue, um, as to where it was being held. And, a couple of times she just said that she was going to pick up her children. Like the day before she disappeared, I, I saw her. She was uh, headed out of town to get some groceries because they were going to have a, a little birthday party on the boat, I believe, for the, the child. And she was so excited to go see them and be with them. And I knew she was had a court date coming up, and she was really thinking that she was going to be able to be getting her children back here with her all the time. Did she ever betray any sense of concern or fear for her safety or the kids? She did, but not. Um, I was just hearing a conversation. Um, I didn't know the grandmother. I didn't know the, the man. I, didn't, I, I knew of the baby daddy, but I didn't know him. Um, 
I knew of the the boyfriend there because he was in a, another case with a, a friend of mine, an, a terrible divorce case. So that's how I knew of him. And and what was the nature? What was the nature of what you overheard in terms of her concerns? Just that she was scared and and nothing was going her way. She would take two steps back or two steps forward and six steps back. There's my friend right there. Hmm. What do you want people to know about your friend? Because they've only learned about her through uh, what ended her life. What do you want them to know about how she lived it? I want you to know who, and I'm not going to cry. She was a good person. She um, was young and full of adventure and full of life. And she wanted nothing more than her children to, to come home. Um, she had a small business up here. I too have a business in this town and, uh, we had seen each other on quite a few occasions and she was a great, a great person. I really miss seeing her little blue car out back of her nutrition shop every day. Cause that's how I knew where she was. Buffy, I'm really sorry for your loss and thank you. Uh, for putting a description to the face that we've all been looking at for the last couple of weeks. Thank you very much. Can, I appreciate you. Can I say one more thing? I spoke yes, with a very close, close, close person of hers. And I said, if you could have me tell them one thing, what would you have me tell them? And she said, Veronica was never going to give up on her kids. She said, and as long as Veronica needed her, she was going to be there her and those babies she didn't want to come on camera she wants to wait till all this is done but that was someone very close to her so i appreciate the reporting uh is good to know yeah i think we need to keep an eye out for these children in the years in the weeks and the months to come and if you think about it all these babies but not just these babies but the one that came forward the one that that the 16 year old girl that's, that's re- represented in those yeah. papers. She, she needs to have a prayer. She yeah, needs to point. be covered in prayer for, for a long time. Not only the, the, you know, problems mentally that she could have the pain, the sorrow, the guilt, whatever, mm-hmm. but she needs to be covered in prayer and, and the babies, all the babies, all yeah, the babies, no even the big it. babies. No, 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 We've already seen that people are willing to kill in this situation. So uh, the the warning uh, is well met. Buffy Schooley, thank you very much. Uh, The 16-year-old that she's talking about is in the reporting. The 16-year-old wound up telling the authorities about what she overheard from the adults. And the adults wound up being the ones who were now arrested. If it weren't for this kid, who knows? Brave. Brave to tell the truth about people that you love. I want to bring in a local reporter now who's been on the case since day one, anchor investigative reporter with KSN TV in Wichita, Kansas, Julia Thatcher. And of course, as always, FBI agent, News Nation Law and Justice contributor, Jennifer Coffin Daffer. Uh, so uh, let me start with you, Julia. Uh, what is your takeaway from what Buffy had to say? We haven't heard from anybody uh, who knew either of these people uh, for weeks. Uh, and also your thought about the 16-year-old that wound up being the linchpin in this situation so far. Go ahead. Yeah, I think the takeaway is the love and support. You know, at the end, it's easy to think about um, Veronica's children and the extended family for Jillian and Veronica, um, but the community members in that town are thinking about everyone involved and the ripple effect of pain that this is having on everyone and all of the children involved. I think that's a huge takeaway, and I think that that is what people in the community want others to know, um, the love and the support that's that's going on there. Um, and then you asked about the 16-year-old that came forward um, I think that that you had mentioned, um, you know, is really the linchpin. That's where a lot of those details and a lot of the confirmation is coming from. All of the speculation that I personally have heard being there on the ground over the last two weeks is really confirmed in that report and confirmed with that 16 year old. Mm. Uh, Jennifer Coffin, unusual. 
uh, to have a kid wind up step uh, stepping up and giving the authorities basically the blueprint of what they needed to put to the adults in the situation. And of course, this is wrapped in the document that News Nation uh, has, which is this habeas corpus that's Latin for "You have the body." It is a fe- it is a legal mechanism whereby you are demanding uh, that a government authority. Uh, produce a person. In this case, the person were the children. And the mother um, was going after the grandmother, saying, produce the kids, because fundamentally she believed they'd been stolen uh, from her. So what do you make of these two aspects, the 16-year-old and the habeas corpus motion that we found? Well, I think, first of all, that 16-year-old was very brave. But You know, investigators had so much digital evidence and forensic evidence, but you need the story told. You need the blueprint all put together so you can put together exactly what happened. And that's what that 16-year-old did. So her information was really vital. And in terms of the habeas corpus, I mean, it sets forth exactly really what we knew. And thankfully, law enforcement was all over this, Chris, in two weeks Four individuals, Mm -hmm. everyone taken into custody, and thankfully answers are there. But law enforcement is going to have to continue with a lot more investigation. Well, Julia, obviously the story that remains to be told is what was worth it to this grandmother to kill in such a brazen fashion with these other people if the allegations stand. I'd love to have you come back uh, and tell us that part of the story when we get the information. And I'll have Coffin Daffer because she's the thinking part of my brain. So, Julia Thatcher, welcome to the show. It's good to have you. And Coffin Daffer, as always, thank you for making sense of it for us. Three minutes, 45 seconds. Um, um, Instead of calls, because I ate up so much time, but it was worth it, I want to tell you who Geraldo thinks won the weekend. It's funny. And even here, in your neighborhood and around the world, Rotary is ensuring children grow up safe from preventable diseases. Only one in five people with autism are employed, despite many having the skill set and desire to work. Maybe it's because employers don't know what kind of jobs they can do. Like, what about a programmer? That's a job for someone with autism. Uh, How about a healthcare worker? Yep. That is too. People with autism can do a lot of different jobs, but often get overlooked due to outdated stigmas. Introducing WIN by Autism Speaks. We help businesses lead the way in inclusive hiring. What about a ranch hand? To learn more, go to autismspeaks.org slash WIN. You can't escape a traffic jam. Know what else you can't escape? Seasonal allergies. Ah! And you might think you can avoid that coffee stain until... Oh, really? You can't escape a lot of things in life. But you can escape prediabetes. Prediabetes captures one in three adults. There are usually no signs of prediabetes. In fact, most people don't even know they have it. But with early diagnosis, you can change the outcome and prevent or delay type 2 diabetes... Take action by taking the one-minute risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. You might not be able to escape having this song stuck in your head. But you can escape prediabetes. Go to doihaveprediabetes.org today. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Geraldo says that News Nation won the weekend because we were mentioned on Saturday Night Live. If you were watching, I'll tell you what, I've been mentioned on SNL before. Not exactly an honor uh, because they're usually going after you. I've never seen this, though. I don't know who this is or who they were pretending that was, but uh, I've never seen them mention a news organization. This was a Beavis and Butthead skit they did. You see, Ryan Gosling was playing um, Beavis. Um, They didn't make fun of News Nation. I've never seen that before, where they're not poking fun at the outlet. And I think there's a reason for it. They know News Nation is doing the right thing. They know that we're trying to help. They know that we're trying to fix the division by giving it to people through the lens of what's reasonable, not left or right. We'll be right back.